Hey guys, what's up? Bob here. So, today I've got a quick video for you guys, and this is going to be kind of interesting. It's not the sort of video I usually make. There's going to be no actual video for it. It's just going to all be audio, so hopefully that's okay with you guys, because it's not changing. Nah. But anyways, um, we are going to be looking at... Recently, the WWE announced that they are going to be having a new brand split, which I am hugely excited for. I think this is going to be exactly what things need to like freshen things up. I love the idea of being able to build talent on one side, build talent on the other, eventually have them cross over, maybe have them fight, something like that. Some sort of champion versus champion thing, perhaps, or just some sort of like exchange of talent. I want to see guys get built up independently and then have that credibility be able to kind of carry over into the other promotion if they are like drafted or traded or whatever. I think this is a really, really, really good idea for their industry. So, of course, anytime that there's going to be a draft, there's going to be people kind of trying to predict things. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you my opinion on what would be an ideal draft for each company, in my opinion. Um, or not company, but you, you get the idea. Like, each, uh, each show. Uh, and basically, I want to go through this. I looked up a full list of the WWE's active roster. It's not as big as I would have assumed. But I know they're going to be uh, snagging some independent guys. They're going to be calling some people up from NXT. All that good stuff. I'm not counting any of that because I don't know who they're going to get. I don't know who they're going to bring up. But I'm just going by active roster. If they had to draft just off of those guys, who do I think they would take? So I'm going to go ahead and start this. Um, basically, and keep, uh, if you want to follow along, feel free to, uh, do, to do that. Uh, also, feel free to leave me comments on what you would like to see, who you'd like to see where. Give me a list. I, I'll read them. Uh, you know, like, I, I'm always psyched for that sort of stuff. I've got all these written down. Now, uh, keep in mind, SmackDown is a shorter show. It's only two hours as, to, as opposed to Raw's three. So, if the roster seems a little bit smaller, that is because it, probably should theoretically be um and uh also i'm putting uh the entire women's division on raw there isn't enough of a division there to split it up in my opinion and putting the entire tag division on smackdown same reason uh i think that uh smackdown could really make use of a, a good solid tag division um to kind of like anchor it like because i know the new day are pretty big draws at this point and if you build up the rest of the tag division around them, I think you could really do well with that. Also, um, and of course the women's division, I think if they ever decide to do two concurrent women's storylines at the same time, having the three hour time slot would be really good for them. Also, again, it's a three hour program. I'm going to have three titles on Raw, two on SmackDown. Uh, well, three belts, but uh, you know, three or er, two titles. So it's going to be, uh, well, I don't want to spoil anything, but of course the world title is going to be on Raw because that's where it belongs. Um, you might be surprised where the, uh, other ones end up, though. Okay, so, let's go ahead and get, oh yeah, also, one other thing. Lesnar and Undertaker. Uh, of course, you could potentially attempt to draft these guys, but they really only show up for pay-per-views anymore anyway. So, mostly Raw, but they're not official members of the roster. Uh, keep that in mind. So, like, yeah, Lesnar should not show up other than, like, to hype a pay-per-view. Um, same thing for Taker, like, this guy should be exclusively either, you know, like, the show before a pay-per-view or just, like, at the pay-per-view itself. Um, so they're kind of, like, I don't know, not exclusive members of either roster. So we're gonna go ahead and start things off. Raw gets first pick, obviously, because that's how you do things. Um, and keep in mind, I grew up watching SmackDown, so I like SmackDown better. <laughs> But anyway, Raw's going to get first pick. I'm going with Reigns, obviously. He's the world champion. You cannot honestly say, like, if you want your title to feel important, you can't pick anybody other than Reigns first. Like, whoever picks first has to pick him. So I'm putting him on uh, on Raw. Um, in my opinion, that's where they want to have their, you know, guy that they want to have spotlighted most. You know, like, they want him on Raw. So I'm entirely okay with that. He's going to be the centerpiece of Raw. That's fine. Whatever. Um, next up, SmackDown. Their first pick. I'm going with Ambrose. I think that if you're going to try to build up two top baby faces, one on each show, this is how you do it. You pick the you know the baby face first. Ambrose needs to be the centerpiece of SmackDown, in my opinion. 
he needs to be looking to claim the title, whatever title it is that SmackDown is built around. I think that Ambrose needs to be the guy going for it. So, yeah, he's he's important. Next up, we've got uh, Raw's next pick, John Cena. Duh. Uh, I mean, if you're going to have Reigns, you got to have Cena as well, because eventually those two are going to have to fight each other. Cena's going to have to lose. If you're going to build up Reigns, you've got to have Cena on the same show. Like, I'm just saying. Um, so, that's, you know, Raw's second pick. Uh, next up, SmackDown's second pick, Rusev. I absolutely love Rusev as a top heel. This guy is the U.S. champion at the moment. Uh, the dude's fantastic. He's just incredible at everything he does. Like, his charisma, his athleticism, the strength, the speed... Just the believability of every move he executes looks like it genuinely hurts. And I think that if you can build this guy up as a monster, monster heel, he could be this generation's, I don't know, Iron Sheik. You know, hold the title for four years or whatever. I forget how long Iron Sheik held it for. Anyway, like, he's the best. So I've got him as my number two pick for SmackDown there. Uh, Rawls' next pick, Rollins. Um, Rollins is an established top tier level bad guy and in my opinion you need someone like that if you're gonna have you know two top tier level baby faces at the top uh rollins can very very easily transition from a program with any any top tier guy to any other top tier guy he's got the name recognition at this point he is probably the number one heel in the business so that's why i'm putting him at uh you know he's got to be on the show with the two top tier baby faces so yeah he's got to be there I'm super happy to have him back, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, uh, SmackDown needs another uh, top-tier heel as well because eventually they're going to have to have Ambrose fight somebody else. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is the second-best heel at the moment, um, behind Rollins, I'd say. Uh, Owens is fantastic in every aspect of everything he does. I think that SmackDown is a great fit for him just because with Mauro there... Kevin Owens has one of the most diverse movesets in all of wrestling. With Morrow, like, calling his moves, I think that he can make it feel like Kevin Owens is this insane technical wrestler that knows everything about the sport he is, uh, you know, like, that he's built his life around. I think that Kevin Owens is uh, definitely the best fit for SmackDown in that regard. Uh, I think he's actually probably, other than... Eh, I'd say Kevin Owens is probably the best fit all around for, like, anybody paired with an announcer. Uh, Mara is definitely the best way to go in that regard. And, of course, with King, King doesn't really have to change his uh, stances too much. Like, I hate it when the heel announcer flip-flops just to support whatever heel there, uh, you know, is in the ring at the moment. Um, King actually doesn't really have to change a lot about what he's saying to support... Uh, Owens. Whereas, like, if you look at somebody like JBL, he has to change a lot of what he thinks to support somebody like Rusev or Owens, uh, because he doesn't like people like them. Uh, Rusev's a foreigner, Owens is fat. JBL has gone on record saying he does not like that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's uh, something that I think he would fit really well. Alright, uh, next up, next pick for uh, Raw, The Miz. Um, Intercontinental Champion, I think that he can't go too, too late in the draft without being picked, uh, just because we need to keep the prestige of the Intercontinental title at least somewhat relevant. Um, this was actually something I kind of, I was kind of flip-flopping on, uh, between putting uh, the Intercontinental title on SmackDown, which would actually probably be a better fit, and the US title on Raw. Um, I really couldn't think of how I wanted to do that, though. Uh, because I wanted Rusev as my anchor for SmackDown. So, unless I could, like, flip-flop the titles, which I really can't do, uh, you know, in, like, a week or whatever, um, I think that uh, Miz has to be taken in a uh, decent, you know, uh, position, and he's going to be on Raw because they need three titles um, because they've got three hours to work with. Okay, so uh, now that we've got him, uh, SmackDown, next guy, Cesaro. They need another top-tier babyface. I think that Cesaro could be that guy. He just needs a chance to be built up. So we're taking him early in the draft on SmackDown side. I think, again, this is another guy that Mauro could really, really uh, kind of build up just through good commentary work. 
And uh, Cesaro can definitely hold his end of the bargain, just in terms of, like, he can build a feud with pretty much anybody. So, like, you know, just off of technical wrestling. So I think that's a really good option. Uh, so Cesaro for SmackDown. Next up, Raw. They're taking Randy Orton. Randy Orton's an established whatever they need him to be. He can be heel, he can be face, whatever. Um, and he's a very good option to have feud with different people. So, Orton. Um... SmackDown's next pick. I'm going with the Wyatt Family. Now, I know I said that the entire tag team division is going to be on SmackDown. The Wyatt Family fits in really well with that. They can potentially have Harper and Rowan go after the tag titles, Strowman do some sort of heel thing at the top of the card, or even, like, the middle of the card area. And, of course, um, Bray can either sit on the sidelines and let Strowman do his work for him, or he can potentially go after the title himself, whatever they need him to do. Uh, I think that Wyatt could definitely be used to... Uh, just kind of, I think he could be a top tier um, kind of heel or face if they decide to turn him later. Um, but I think he contrasts really well with a lot of the other guys. Now, I know he and Ambrose had kind of an underwhelming feud earlier, but uh, at this point, like, if Ambrose becomes kind of top tier babyface, everything he does will feel more important. So, because of that, I think that he's going to be able to uh, just kind of be used in that regard. Also, uh, Bray Wyatt has shown that he can kind of disappear off of TV for a little while, and nobody really questions it. It just kind of happens sometimes. So, I think that Bray, even if they don't immediately use him as a top-tier uh, heel, after Ambrose finishes a program with, say, Rusev or Owens, he could transition really well into a feud uh, with the Wyatt family without them necessarily having been exposed prior to that. Um... And with a lot of different kind of people around, I think that they can mix it up with a lot of different people at the same time, and they can kind of become a bigger group. Like, it'll feel bigger with the smaller roster on SmackDown. So, that's uh, that's the White family. Uh, next up for Raw, AJ Styles. The guy's fantastic. Um, there's not re like, he's one that I would actually slot in maybe a little bit higher if I could, but I couldn't think of anybody else who, like, I didn't, who I wanted to move down. Uh, he would fit in very well with either comp or like you know either brand, uh, and I could really see him uh, working in SmackDown like very easily, especially like a program with Cesaro or something. But I kind of wanted to keep him away from Anderson and Gallows, um, and then maybe have them meet up again later if they like decide to turn on uh, on him or something. Uh, but again, you could put him on SmackDown and have that program immediately. Uh, at any point, Finn Balor could you know turn up and just like attack him. I think that uh, there's a lot you could do with him, but I have him on Raw just because it's a more established name. And you'll see a lot of what I'm doing here. Established names on Raw, guys you want to build up on SmackDown. I think that's a really good way to do things. Um, just because, like, with SmackDown, it's, again, a shorter time slot, so you don't have to, like, expect people to sit around for three hours watching this. You know, it's it's something that you can kind of pop on. It's um, more snacky, almost. And you can just kind of, like... If they want to see guys getting built up, that's where you go. If you want to see, like, you know, the Johns, like, the very casual, casual fans can watch Raw and just kind of be, like, happy with that. But SmackDown, again, will be casual fan friendly, but it'll also um, be a little bit more experimental. I like that idea. So, uh, that brings us to SmackDown being experimental. We've got Baron Corbin. Now, I know you guys are probably going to freak out at me for picking Baron Corbin over some of the other guys who are a lot more established. But, I absolutely love Baron Corbin's look. I think he's great. Uh, like, a lot of charisma. I know he's not amazing in the ring and not amazing on the mic, but he's passable in both of those regards. And I think that if you're going to want to build somebody up to eventually transition over to Raw and feud with the top-level faces, somebody like Reigns or Cena, Baron Corbin is probably your best bet right now. Uh, this guy could be built up to pretty much any height that they want him to. He's like, you know, because he's got the size, the look, the muscles, all that stuff, and he's got an amazing finisher. Uh, I think that Corbin could potentially be used in a number of different ways that you could build this guy up as much as you want. Uh, and you could have him pretty much trash, like you know, uh, individual members of tag teams that I know they like to do squash matches with this guy. Um, that's something I always thought was a good option is like, if you have him go up against like, say Primo in one, like one week, then maybe the next week fight Epico or whatever. Um, not only would Moro 
be able to go like, okay, well, uh, Primo and Epico, they're tag team specialists, so obviously they don't necessarily focus as much on singles competition. This is going to give uh, them a bit of a disadvantage when they're fighting somebody like Corbin. Have him squash them, but then they can go back to the tag team division and be like, okay, this is where they're at, you know, at their best. That match against Corbin isn't necessarily indicative of how good these guys are. Uh, so we can, and that just lets them kind of have an excuse for having lost a match without losing credibility. So I think that if you're, if they're going to continue doing squash matches like that with Corbin, SmackDown's going to be the better option for him just because they're going to have those tag teams that he can potentially work with. So I think that's a really good way uh, of doing things. Uh, next up, we've got Alberto Del Rio on Raw. Um, uh, again, an established name. This guy has won Royal Rumbles. He's won World Titles. You can have him feud with pretty much anybody if you give him a couple of wins in a row, maybe have him win a number one contenders match. This guy is somebody who has that name value. Even if you don't necessarily buy him as a world title or like world champion, you can still potentially put him in a match for it. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. So I think Alberto Del Rio, plus he can have a good match with pretty much anybody, which is really necessary when you've got somebody like Reigns at the top of the card who isn't necessarily the best worker. Side note, I really don't like Reigns, but whatever. Um, so on SmackDown, we got Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, a young talent who I really, really, really value. I think he's one of the best in the business right now. And another guy who they could potentially build up however they want. I'm taking him a little bit later. He hasn't had the most success on the main roster, just in terms of win-losses. So I don't think it makes sense for either of the potential GMs to pick him above somebody who does have the most success. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the reasoning behind that. Uh, next up we've got, uh, Ziggler. Uh, I've got Dolph Ziggler on, um, Raw because he needs to kind of go out there and flop around and lose. Um, no offense to Ziggler. Like, it, he, that's kind of what he's there for at this point. Um, I just don't really see him winning any titles other than maybe the Intercontinental title, but... The fact that he can sell and make other people look good is kind of what Raw needs. They need somebody to build up their top tier heels. Somebody like a uh, Orton if he turns him heel, Miz, Rollins. Rollins and Ziggler always have good matches, and they always make Rollins look really, really good. Um, so if they're going to build up those guys, that's how you're going to do it with uh, you know having Ziggler there to make them look good. Um, so then we've got uh, Neville, Adrian Neville, Neville, whatever. Uh, on SmackDown, he's, in my opinion, he's actually probably my favorite of the NXT call-ups, but again, uh, hasn't had the most success. Uh, but I think that SmackDown, being that more experimental brand, I think that uh, Neville could, if he wants to transition into a tag team wrestler, he can do that. If he wants to say singles wrestler, you can put him in matches against guys on, you know, like pretty much of any caliber. And he's always going to be able to make him look good, but he can also put in, you know, a lot of work. Fans will always respond really positively to this guy. So I think that um, having him on SmackDown brand, that'll generate a bit of excitement behind them and just kind of like pop the crowd to, even if it doesn't necessarily draw money immediately, uh, having the, like being able to show people how excited the SmackDown crowd is, is going to be able to kind of like make more people look at it more seriously. And I think that's important. Next up, uh, and keep in mind, there are going to be more picks for Raw. I've got a couple more. I've got, like, what, four more on Raw than I do on SmackDown, just because SmackDown has that tag team roster and stuff. So uh, next up for Raw is going to be the Big Show. I don't really know how frequently he wrestles, but he's around. He's a big, established, whatever heel usually. I don't like him as a fate. I don't like him generally, but he's kind of there. We're At this point, it's kind of bottom of the barrel, guys. Uh, so Big Show's over there. Um... SmackDown, again, bottom of the barrel guy, big strong guy, Mark Henry. I don't know if he's still wrestling, but he's, you know, he can be used to put over interesting talents. Basically, anybody decent, have Henry lose to them. Um, <laughs> uh, at some point, Wyatt Family's going to have to destroy this guy. I've uh, At the Royal Rumble, Braun Strowman did a scoop slam on Mark Henry, and it looked amazing. So if you want to build up Braun Strowman, have him fight Henry. Uh, that's basically the thought there. Um... Let's see, uh, Raw, Sheamus, um, yeah, Sheamus, another kind of established guy, you can kind of slot him in wherever you want, usually mid-card scene, if you want to give him some wins, you can do that, but I usually just have him there to lose, um, over on SmackDown, we've got Zack Ryder, 
Uh, I don't know if he's staying in NXT or what. He's just kind of everywhere nowadays. But if you're going to have somebody kind of be like a lower card face guy that the heels can beat up on, Zack Ryder is always a good option. Fans still react to him, which is crazy. Um, next up, we've got Apollo Crews. If you're going to have Sheamus fight somebody, he's already got a feud going with Apollo Crews. I think Crews actually slots in really well on Raw because he's very, very good generally. Um, this guy, I think this is somebody who, like, management can look at and say, like, okay, we don't really need to experiment with this guy. He's already got a really good look and stuff. We're just going to put him in the main event scene and just kind of have him there. Um, but he can kind of be, like, a wild card pick. Is like, somebody who... Yeah, we picked kind of low, and he's got a really high upside, and the announcers can talk about that. I think that's one of the most important things. Have the announcers talk about, like, what's so great about this guy, because that's important. Uh, next up, we've got, and uh, this is my last pick on SmackDown, just because I, again, wanted to keep the roster a little bit smaller. Uh, Jack Swagger. I don't really know what he does. He's around, though. Um, and you could, you know, potentially have him do some matches against, like, local guys, and then just, like, get mauled by Baron Corbin. Basically, that's why he's there. Um, uh, again, also get mauled by Rusev, because Rusev is just better. Um, so, yeah, like, he's just there. Uh, not a fan of Jack Swagger, he injures people and stuff, but just have him get kicked in the face a few times by Rusev, and, like, that'll earn him. Okay, uh, last couple of picks for, um, Raw. Uh, Jericho, because he's around. I don't really, like, you can pick him earlier if you want, but he's never there. Um, Darren Young, uh, not really sure what they're doing with him. They'll probably put him in a feud with, like, I don't know, Johnny No Name, and it'll just, and it'll be, like, the same match every week forever. Like, what they did with Los Amatadores and Three Man Band. Like, nobody ever benefited from that feud going on for, like, eight months, even though, like, they, Los Matadores pretty much won every match. But then they never got used for anything afterwards. Like, they never lost anybody else to put them over in a meaningful way. Or transitioned any of that momentum into, like, a tag title program. I don't know. Like, yeah. Not really sure what he's doing, though. He's just kind of around. Maybe he'll have him with some matches. I don't know. And Kane. Um, Kane, Raw, whatever. Again, another heel that they can just kind of use for whatever they want. I don't know. Um... But yeah, so like Charlotte, um, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, all them, they're going to be on Raw. Uh, SmackDown's going to have New Day, Dudley Boys, all those guys. Um, and I think that's something that you can really uh, work with. Now, uh, so keep in mind, top of the card on each side. Uh, top of Raw, Rain, Cena, Rollins, Miz, Orton. Uh, and then top of SmackDown, Ambrose, Rusev, Owen, Cesaro, and the Wyatts. I think that's a stacked lineup, honestly. Like, that's something that I would feel comfortable building a, pro, uh, a show a uh, show around especially on the smackdown side i love the idea of just building up these younger guys having them feel important because they're in the main event of every show and on the raw side um if they're already doing that with reigns even though everybody hates him and i hate him he's the worst but he's your champion you gotta if you're gonna like if they're gonna build this guy up anyway do it right <laughs> that's what i'm saying and then Cena, because he's already a main eventer. Rollins, because he's already a main eventer. Miz, because he's, you know, a champion. I think he can be used for things. And Orton, because he's a former champion that is a main eventer. And then, of course, like, lower, even lower on the card in that is still main event guys. AJ Styles, Alberto Del Rio, Ziggler. Those guys are, you know, still, like, main event level guys. So, that's what I've got, guys. If you have any opinions on this uh, on this sort of thing, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I would be happy to read them. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I will see you later. Bye.